Okay, this is part two of the, the book review on digestive tune-up by Dr. John McDougall, and he talks about bad breath, halitosis, and he says it's by far most commonly due to animal protein. Uh, animal protein is a lot more methionine and cysteine. Those are the sulfur-containing amino acids. He got a good quote here. He says, if you eat it, you ooze it. <laughs> it comes out of you. You smell like what you eat. The main factor in determining how we smell and how our breath smells is what we eat. He says, the mouth is a mirror reflecting the he your health and the health of the rest of the body. So I got that impression because I look a lot of demented brains. And I can tell from across the room, if I see bilateral cataract surgery, very common, and then I see poor dentition, like all the teeth are missing, a dentulus, or I see a bunch of periapical lucencies around the teeth, I know that patient's probably demented. And usually that'll go with an atrophic brain, you know, shrunken away from the inner table of the skull and just diffuse cerebral atrophy. That's the most common thing I see in a cognitively impaired patient. Okay, and McDougall had an interesting thing. It wasn't in his book, but it was in a lecture that he made, not one of his online videos. He talked about how increased uh, sulfur in the amino acids of animal protein lead to a low-grade metabolic acidosis in the human body because they get converted in part to sulfuric acid. And then they're excreted by the kidney. And when they're excreted by the kidney, they simultaneously excrete uh, protons, uh, lower the acid in the body, and they simultaneously excrete calcium and protons go into the urine. So you sort of pee out your bones. He's described it as that. And, and the reason I mention it is because the osteoporosis we typically think of as being in the spine, predisposing you to increased risk of a spine compression fracture, for example, or you fall on an outstretched wrist, a foosh, and you get a wrist fracture or a hip fracture. Okay, fine. But the reason why I'm talking about it now is when you get osteoporosis, you get osteoporosis in your maxilla and your mandible of your jaw, and that weakens the ability of those bones to grab onto your teeth and you're more likely to have your teeth fall out. I can tell you, most of my demented patients have lost a whole bunch of teeth, if not all of them. So, and the other thing I told you, they, they usually have had bilateral cataract surgery. So the damage shows up first in the teeth and the mouth, and that should be a big warning sign, a neon warning sign, you are going demented, okay? So somebody says, oh, I'm going to the dentist again, it's no big deal. Maybe it is a big deal. Maybe it's a sign that they're becoming stupider and stupider and they better get their act together before it's too late. People reach a tipping point where their brain damage is irreversible. They've lost their mental energy, they've lost their curiosity, and then there's no hope for them whatsoever of ever being cured. Most people never get better. There's like this big myth, you go to the doctor to get well. No, you go to the doctor to get drugs and surgery, and most people don't get better. So this is your best chance to learn something here. Okay, so let's see, what else? Most common cause of bad breath is from excess eating of sulfur foods. The bacteria in the mouth, they break down the animal proteins and they release gaseous sulfur compounds. That especially happens more in the, in the bowel. Um, and the odor from sulfur smells like rotten eggs. And so this is what was interesting as well. He talked about the bacteria in the gut take these sulfur-containing amino acids and they convert it into dihydrogen sulfide, H2S, and something called methylmercaptan you know, a methyl group on a, on a sulfur group there. Anyways, the point was these gases go into your blood, the sulfur, and then they go into your lungs and we exhale the sulfur gas. And the relevance is that there's sulfur in, in your exhalation air. So it doesn't matter how much you brush your teeth or use mouthwash or something, you can't get rid of that. You're going to keep on breathing sulfur air. So you're going to have bad breath unless you yeah, avoiding the, the meat, for example. Okay, other there's some plant foods that have a lot of sulfur, garlic and onions, okay. Um, you can fix this problem, you can't fix this problem with toothpaste or mouthwash for the reason I just said, you're exhaling uh, that air. In addition, the problem, he didn't know this at the time this book was written, but you, this, is, this is years ago, you know, um, it was, you know, over 15 years ago, is that if you're using F- minus toothpaste or mouthwash, you're gonna kill the bacteria in the back of your tongue. Remember, if you take the greens, like from Nathan Bryan and Caldwell Lesson, if you eat the greens, the salad, in your mouth, the back of the tongue has bacteria that convert the greens, which is nitrates, NO3s, to NO2s, nitrites. Then they go down the stomach. The stomach acid converts them to, to nitric oxide, NO. That's absorbed in your blood, systemic vasodilation. You feel good. Keeps your arteries open. So the point I'm saying is you increase your chance of having hypertension and atherosclerosis if you're uh, brushing your teeth with F- minus or mouthwashing it and wiping out those bacteria on the back of your tongue so you can't make that nitrate conversion, okay? Um, McDougal said you can fix your breath by just fixing your diet. He says after seven days on a McDougal diet, patients had a 50% reduction in exhaled sulfur based on a measurement with a halometer by a dentist. So what that means is it's a halitosis meter. He had a dentist uh, friend who was able to measure the amount of exhaled sulfur. I thought that was pretty cool. And it would drop by 50% after seven days when they went on the McDougal diet, which is a low-fat vegan diet with no oils.
in general, animal protein, um, you know, has a different amino acid composition than plant food, so it has about five times more methionine, a sulfur-containing amino acid. You know, and again, we talked about the sulfur groups are converted to sulfuric acid um, in the body as part of their metabolism, and then the body has to buffer that acid, so it'll excrete hydrogen protons, which are acid, uh, and simultaneously calcium into the into the urine at that time, which means that calcium in part of it is leached from the bones, uh, leading to osteoporosis. Um, Okay, what else? He did say some things that I disagree with a little bit. Like he said you should go to a dental hygienist every three to six months to get your teeth cleaned. I don't agree. I don't like being in that dental chair. I take good care of my teeth. I haven't been to a dentist in over 25 years. Um, my teeth are fine. I once went on like this double date thing with my wife many, many years ago and her friend whose sister was a dentist. And she looked at my teeth for free and said they were fine. She said, you will die with those teeth. Okay, uh, he also said something about a mouthwash of chlorine dioxide. And again, this was before anybody knew about the whole Nathan Bryan stuff about the tongue pathway of activation of nitric oxide. So nobody knew in the time when this book was written. Um, so anyways, that's it for uh, this uh, part two of Digestive Tuna book review. Uh, what's in the mouth. Hope that was helpful.